Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Now, today's a pretty special day because I have just received a package from Daytona Sensors. The director of marketing, I believe, Adam Glow, was kind enough to send me um, a system to try it out on my truck. I actually reached out to him explaining my frustration with my MSD 6014, and he was more than happy to send me a box to try out on my own um, LS Swap Dodge truck. So let's go ahead and jump into it. We've got ourselves the uh, wiring harness. As far as I know, let's see. Uh, it says right here, it's Smart Spark LS, LS1 slash LS6, remote mount wiring harness made in USA. So uh, from what Adam Glow, uh, I spoke to him on the phone and he let me know that all of his parts are made in USA. I know MSD also claims that they're made in USA, but the fact is that their circuit boards are actually manufactured in China and it, they're actually assembled in USA, which I'm assuming is why we have so many failures. So this is the harness and then here is the actual uh, ignition module. So let's uh, move this box out of the way and let's go ahead and and open this up right here. So we, we do get our sticker, which is always nice. Who doesn't love a sticker? And in here, we've got the ignition module. And uh, it's actually really heavy, really heavy. Oh, what's this? We've got some resistors. I, I think I'm gonna need to find out what those are for. We got some resistors. This looks like it's a pretty heavy duty plate. It looks like it's a billet aluminum. Um, and I believe the entire system, yeah, so there's an epoxy resin in the middle. So it's 100% solid state, non-serviceable. And it also means that there's no hollow parts inside, so nothing can jangle around. So it's a really, for, as far as I can tell, it's a really solid system. Uh, you've got your mechanical, well not mechanical, it's a mechanical dial, electronic rev limiter, RPM times 1000 times 100 right here. So let me grab myself a pointer right there. Basically what you've got is uh, you can decide your RPM limit by 1000 looks like starting from 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. And then you've got RPM times 100. So you can, if you wanted it to be at 55, I would assume you go ahead and move this dial down. Ooh, it clicks actually really nice. So 5,500, so you put this on five and then you dial this out. It's actually got a really nice click to it. The MSD 6014, uh, when, when you're switching between the different modes, it nowhere near as clean. Actually, you can't, oftentimes you can't even feel it. But, so I'm already liking the system already. And then you have your modes, uh, zero through nine. I'm gonna have to look up the, what that is. And the advance, zero through nine. So, um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I didn't do a lot of research on this box. So we are going to be learning about this together, especially what these resistors are for. So let's set this aside. We've got ourselves a USB interface. So I see that it comes with a tuning cable right here as well. The tuning cable uses the same type as the MSD 6014. So if you already had a 6014, you'd be able to use the same cable. Uh, let's see what type of cable. Pretty standard stuff, nothing too special about the cable. And the fit and finish on this is actually really good as well. Yep, pretty solid, nothing janky here. So you got this box, the, the USB interface, so I'm assuming we're going to be doing smart sparks. So I'm going to click this over to B as of right now in case I forget. And then it looks like we got a manual. Jeez, this is a gigantic manual. I'm going to have to read through this on my own free time because this is just way too much. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so let's check this out. I was under the impression that the SmartSpark ILS didn't have um, adjustments for map, like map sensor adjustments, that it was all like a linear table like the MSD6010. Um, and, I, and that's why I kind of like the 6014 a little bit more, but it actually, it looks right here, you've got uh, a sample timing table, least aggressive is what it says. Oh, this is actually setting zero, so that means there must be 
um, setting nine most aggressive. So yeah, so you've got different timing tables right here, and I'm sure you have a custom table as well. But you, as on right here on the left, you can see 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 30. This is map signal on the left, RPM signal on the right. So actually, you've got a pretty good system right here that's actually quite comparable to the 6014 already. I'm going to have to play with the settings, but this is a lot of information. The 6014 came with like three three pages, and it said kind of figure it out on your own. <laughs> so let's look at the harness now that we're here. I'm going to set this aside. This is really nice. Let's go ahead and set that aside. Let's open this up. A lot of people like these unboxings because you don't actually know what you're going to get inside like when you buy kits and stuff and I've made the mistake of not watching unboxing videos and then and I end up ordering stuff I don't actually need because the stuff already comes with it then I have to go through a bunch of returns so this is the diagram showing you how you got to connect stuff so you got cam position sensor map sensor uh, which is really nice you got your USB interface then you've got the two connectors to the smart spark LS uh, and then you got two connectors for the coils, two, four, six, and eight, one, three, five, and seven on this side. Then you got a nice ground, uh, accessory power, and your tack. I'm assuming it's accessory power. I'm going to need to look that up, make sure it's not full time uh, 12 volts. So I'll look that up myself. And then we've got, uh, looks like we do have a hookup for two step and um, step retard. So that's actually exactly the same as the MSD 6014. So, so far, in terms of features, this thing's going toe to toe with the 6014 and I'm actually really surprised. And I, and I mean that in a good way. <laughs> Don't take that as a bad way. So let's uh, go ahead. Oh, let's actually get move this over here. I got a lot of shavings because I was modifying a carburetor earlier. So, all right, so just like in the, in this, uh, the instruction sheet that we have here this is the sensor for the CKP crank position sensor CMP for the cam position sensor we've got the power the pink is the power the yellow I believe is a step retard blue is the two-step so turbo friendly for sure and the white was the ground I believe oh the tack yeah, the tack, actually. I've got to check, but I think it'll produce the same HEI square wave that the MSD systems put out. Uh, I'm not too certain. The HEI square wave is pretty common, and you can modify a lot of factory tacks to accept it. So that's really cool as well. Let's see. We got the ground right here. Nice fat wire. Jesus. I don't know where it's supposed to bolt onto, but it's gigantic right here. Look at that thing. I don't know where I'm supposed to bolt this up. It is huge. All right, moving on. We've got one of the coil uh, harnesses right here. Uh, this is for coils one, three, five, and seven. We've got ourselves the map sensor right here. This is actually the most exciting part for me, mainly because I honestly thought there was no um vacuum advance on this box and i was actually pretty sad um i'm this is actually really nice super happy that this has a uh, adjustments based on load which means i will be able to daily drive this no problem we'll just hope that well actually a big difference between the msd box and the daytona sensors box is that the map sensor on this one you're going to be using the stock looks like the stock gm um, 2.5 bar sensor which is way better than the MSD because the MSD uses a proprietary internally uh, situated map sensor that is non-serviceable. The issues that I was having with my, uh, my map sensors inside the MSD boxes is that they kept reading wrong values. They weren't giving me what I needed them to give me and so they were completely unusable for daily driving and in fact even for racing for the most part I was unable to use any of the advanced tables I was only able to run linear tables which is really annoying 
when they do it like this where you have to use your OEM sensor, it's actually really nice because if, if you ever have a problem with the sensor, all you got to do is remove it, go to the junkyard, grab two or three more and slap them on, you're on your way. So this is actually really, really cool. Uh, I'm super stoked about this. I can't wait to install it. Uh, you've got two, four, six, and eight. Uh, another note about these coil connectors, and this is actually really neat as well, is that on the MSD, the ground wire is separate from the loom. So basically, you have to ground each side individually. I ended up grounding them to the same place on the back of the head, but it's a little bit messy when you've got your nice, you know, the nice loom is already all set up, and then you got a black wire just kind of dangling around there. That's really annoying, looked really unprofessional. I didn't really like how that was set up. Everything here is hooked up by a ground, a single ground. I, I'm not sure if this is enough gauge for the system, but I'm going to assume they know what they're doing. I'm gonna to need to also find out if the box has to be grounded from the case or if it should be fine the way it is. These two connectors are the connectors for the actual ignition box. So they're actually color coded, so black goes with black. Okay. Oh, this is tough. There we go. Nice solid click right there. And then this one. Oh, they're actually douche, douche works uh, connectors, which is actually really cool as well. I install this right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Solid click. There we go. That ain't going nowhere. And then this is the connector for the USB interface, which is interesting i i don't know how i feel about this particularly all right and then you're good to go i think they do it like this because they can use the interface i'm sure the cd box runs uh a different system altogether, and they wanted an interface that can pretty much talk to both systems so they don't have to design specific hardware for each module and i'm sure serviceability was also a key component for example if the tuning cable has to hook up to an auxiliary device such as this, you're not hooking up directly into the into the ignition box, so you're not damaging anything. If you ever run into a problem where you damage the port and it's integrated into the box, if you damage the port, that's done. You're not able to do any more adjustments. Whereas if you damage this, you crush it, you break it, you do whatever, you will just need to contact uh, Daytona and find a way to have them send you another one of these. And I'm pretty sure you should be on your way because I don't think this, this is probably just a signal, um, like a converter. And this will just translate to whatever the box needs to see. Um, if you ever damage this, break this, you could probably just replace it. That's, uh, I'm assuming that's why they did it with this particular um, connector auxiliary. They, this is kind of uh, reminiscent of how the Europeans set up their stuff, like the OEMs. Um, although I'm not a fan of European engineering, but I do know that the stuff works. When it breaks, it's kind of an issue that you got to be swapping parts around, but I'm confident that we're going to have zero issues with this system. In the next video, I'm going to compare this directly to the MSD. I know I did a little bit of comparing uh, right now, but I do want to go, I do want to actually read the entire manual. You guys saw how big it was. I want to go through the whole manual, go through all the features, then we'll go step by step and we'll do bang for your buck comparison. So, so that's all I got for you guys today. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out. This is really cool. <laughs>